Hi everyone! Welcome to the next lecture of Advanced Course, where we will be creating a lighting plan. The term lighting plan refers to the preparation of different types of plans, such as wiring layout plan, switches, sockets, and lighting layout plan. The type of the plan we need to prepare depends on the project, the requirements, and the designer. We will prepare all four plans during the workshop. Let's look at the final PDF. Here are the sockets layout plan, the switches layout plan, lighting layout plan, and the wiring layout plan. As you can see, the furniture has been marked with a lighter color to make the plan easier to see. Let's look at how we can place electrical accessories in the project. One option is to download different types of electrical accessories from the showroom. I show you two manufacturers. One is Logos. Here you can find different styles of electrical accessories, sockets and switches. The other manufacturer is Schneider Electric, where you can find switches and sockets of Merton D Live and Sedna Type. You will be able to download and install these in your project by clicking on the download button. Another option is to work from the design center. With the switches and sockets already prepared from where, we can use the drag and drop method to place them. Let's choose this one gang switch and place it. The program will help us right away and place this switch on the wall. The next option is on the interior electrical accessory, placing from the library, or you can create customized items and thus create customized gangs. By clicking on the dressable mounting, I can choose how many gangs I will insert. Now let's create a socket and an IT socket. I'm going to select two gangs here and since we are not going to give the two mechanisms the same function, I'm going to turn off the equal gang units option. We can set the direction to vertical or horizontal. I will use the horizontal one. On the next tab, I'll set the mechanism so what function these gangs will have. As I mentioned, the one on the left is a simple socket. I can use the arrow or click to switch between the two mechanisms. This will be an IT socket. On the next step, I set the material. In order to change it, I have to turn off the same image for all units option. I choose the data socket for this one and for the other one, the socket outlet material. On the next step, I can change the color of the frame. This should be white. On the General Setting tab, I can set the relative elevation of the element and the layer it should be placed on. I've already made a layer for them, the sockets one. I save it. The name should be Sockets, and I save it in the Switches and Sockets and other categories. I go back to the floor plan and place it. It's worth zooming in on it. It will be much more accurate. We can see the outlet in 3D too. Let's get back to work. Our first task will be the wiring layout plan. I've already created the layer variations, so I just need to switch to that. Let's take a look at the PDF to see what the plan will look like. I marked the lamps with a symbolic representation and connected them to the switches with an arc. To be able to mark lamps with a symbolic representation, we need to set the types of the lighting fixtures. There are two ways to do this. One is under Lighting, Lighting Fixture. I select the ceiling lamp option. I then need to select all ceiling lamps on the floor plan. If I now click on the lamp and look at the type in the Properties menu, I see that it is set to ceiling. And with that, I've shown the other solution. I select this spot lamp and I can see that the type is not set, so I can change it to spot lamp. All other lamps have their type set, so we can move on to the next task. We'll go through the comments of the lighting plan to create the wiring layout plan. The first menu item is Settings. Here we are able to set the symbolic representation of the lamps. By default, the program uses these symbolic representations. 
If you want to change them, you can do it here with the edit command. The next thing we need to choose is the connection element of the plan. As I've shown, I'm going to use an arc, but there is also the option to select line or text. The text is a numbering, which is most commonly used for more complex projects. I select the arc, then I have to specify an arc style. There is only one style in the list, the normal circle. To choose from multiple styles, I need to create and save new styles. Let's make one. I click on the drafting tool, select properties, circles, and set its properties. The layer it will be placed on is the arc wiring that I have created beforehand. The color should be pink as you could see in the finished PDF. The line weights should be 5 mm. With a click on the cogwheel icon, I save it as a new style. The name should be wiring layout. I'm not setting the folder and subfolder now, just to be available in all projects. I accept it with OK. I go back to the interior lighting plan settings. And from the list, I select the new style. Here we can also reset the default settings if needed. Let's go to the next command to switch to symbolic representation. Now we can see the lamps with their symbolic icons. Let's look at the ways of the switches. I choose one of them. This is a triple way switch, but only two of them are set. I can change the number of the paths in the properties menu or in the side menu. I change it to three and the third way appears to which I can assign another light. Let's look at the first option, how to connect the lights and the switches. I choose Interior, Lighting Plan, Assignment of Switches and Lamps. First, I have to select the switch, then the lamp, and finally, I have to connect them with the arc. The other option is to click on the way marker in the local menu and connect them. You can see that the first way has turned red, so it is already occupied, and the others are blue and still free. I will connect these two wall lamps behind the bed. I select the way, the assignment of the switches and the lamps, then select the wall lamp and create the arc. I also connect the other wall lamp. Moving on, there is also a three-way switch here that I'm going to use to switch the same lights. As before, I'm going to assign them to the switch. Let's continue with the bathroom. Here we need to connect a LED strip and a ceiling light, so we will use a two-way switch and connect the lights and the switch with the two wires. Moving on, here we will connect this single-way switch together with this spotlight. I'm going to click on it and select Command, connect them and create the arc. In the entry, these lights are connected simultaneously from this single way switch, so I have to connect them together. I select the lamp and then draw the arc. If the lights are connected from one circuit, after drawing the arc, I can click on the next light and connect them together. I click again on the next lamp and create the last arc. Let's have a look at the kitchen area. I'm assigning this three way switch to this lamp. then to this lamp and this lamp, so now all ways are taken. There is also an alternative switch here which will switch these spotlights, so I'm going to connect it to this. And because two spotlights are connected at the same time, I'm going to connect them together. There is another switch that I'm going to switch these same lamps, the other alternative switch in the bedroom. So I'm going to choose the way for that one as well. Specify the lamp and place the arc. The last switch is a double switch, which will switch the LED lights. I'm going to connect those as well.
I can also modify the arc. Click on it and choose Change Arc command. Let's see how we can delete connections. One way is to click on the arc and simply delete it, which will also delete the connection between the switch and the lamp. I'll undo that now. The next option is to delete is the lighting plan menu, delete connection. There are three options. One is to select the lamp, then only the connection between that lamp and the switch will be deleted. The other option is that if we select the switch, always sign to the switch will be deleted. And the third option is that when the way is selected, in this case only that particular link will be deleted. Let's look at another command under the lighting plan menu, the status of lamps. This will allow us to check that all switches and lights are connected. Connected switches and lamps will be shown in red and free ones that we haven't assigned yet will be shown in green. So we still have to connect this outdoor switch with these lights. Let's check the status again. Now all switches and lamps are red, so we have connected them all. The last command we will look at the lighting plan is the power to be installed in the room. The purpose of this command is to determine the approximate power required to light a room. To do this, we need room stamps. I'm going to turn up the room and the area layer. I click on the command, then select the room stamp. A pop-up dialog will show the gross area. We have to select the environmental factor, clean interior or dust polluted space. I choose the clean interior. We also have to choose the illumination, so what type of room it is. It will be a community space. The next lighting efficiency, that is whether we use direct or indirect lighting in the space. Here I choose direct lighting. So we get the luminous flux to be installed in lumens. Finally, we need to set the average luminous efficiency index of the light sources. This should be LED light source, 90 lumens per watt. This gives us the built-in power. These will be really only approximate values. If we accept that, we can place it on the floor plan. It is a text, so we can even customize this. We can set text height, font and other properties on it. That was the final step of the wiring layout plan. The next will be the sockets layout plan. I switch over to socket layout layer variation and turn on dimension sockets because I've already got some of the dimensions pre-made, so we will just place the remaining dimensions. Let's take a look at the sockets layout plan on the PDF. We see that all sockets are dimensioned from the walls and we can see that the height values as well. However, if we look at the comment here, we see that the height of the sockets is set to 300 mm from the covered floor level and the cases other than this are marked separately. So we will not mark all the heights, only those that deviate from 300 mm. I go back to the floor plan and let's get to the dimensioning. With the interior, electrical accessory, switches or sockets location relation to the wall command, we will be able to dimension them. I select this wall and place the dimension line right away. I do the same thing down here. So I select the wall and place the dimension line. We can also use the dimension, switches and sockets distance command. We are done with the distances. The next command is the switches and sockets manage elevation. This will allow me to show their heights. So I select this command. I can dimension the sockets all at once or one by one. I do it one at a time, because we are going only to dimension the sockets that are different from 300 mm in height. This is the socket I will be dimensioning. I select it and place the value. The height dimensioning is now done. All that's left to place the newly placed elements on the correct layer. I select the whole 
control plan and in the light dimension I move them to the dimension sockets layer. I move this height value as well, so now everything is on the correct layer. We can continue working with the switches layout plan. I choose the corresponding layer variation. Let's look at the PDF. It is also indicated here that the heights of the switches are 1200 mm from the covered floor level and only the different values will be marked on the floor plan. I go back to arch line and turn on the dimension switches layer. We'll just dimension the missing switches as we did before with the sockets. I select the common dimension, switches and sockets distance, I click on the wall and place the dimension line. Where no opening is placed in the wall, the program will dimension from the wall to wall. Where it is, it will place the dimension lines from the opening. Here is another switch. I dimension that as well. Let's also place the height values with the dimension, switches and sockets, manage elevation command. I select the option one by one elevation, then click on the switch and place the value. Finally, what we still need to do here is to place the new elements on the correct layer. I select the dimension lines and place them on the dimensions switches layer. We are done. The last plan is the lighting layout plan. For this, I choose the corresponding layer variation and switch on the dimensioning, lamps layer. We have an easy job with wall lights. The dimensioning can be done with the command lamps on the wall. We can place the dimension lines in the same way as we did for the sockets and switches. So I select the wall and place it. I do the same here. I select the wall and place the dimension line. For ceiling lights, however, we have to use the length dimensions. I usually use vertical and horizontal series. Now I will choose the vertical one. I dimension this lamp. We also need to specify the mounting height of the wall lamps. I choose Manage Elevation command. Then I select them one by one. I will select the lamp and then place the value down. I do the same thing here. So with a few clicks we can get this done as well. The last step is also the layer management. I place these newly created dimensions on the correct layers. I select the length dimension and move them to the dimension lamps layer. With that we are done with the lighting plans. I now update the layer variations so that we can easily add different plans to the plan sheets. I open the layer manager and select the used layers. Let's look at the socket layout first. Here I need to see the sockets and their corresponding dimensions. I update the layer variation. The following is the switches layout. I turn on the dimension, switch layer and update the variation. For the wiring layout, all required layers are turned on. Finally, for the lighting layout, I turned on the dimension, lamps layer and update it. The final step is to make the plan sheets. From the project navigator, I open the lighting plan plot layout that I have already prepared and I will place the plans on these sheets. The first one is the socket layout plan. On the floor plan, I select the corresponding variation. From the project navigator, I drag the ground floor and drop it in 1 to 50 scale to the sheet. We can go on. The next, the switch layout plan, I select the corresponding variation and drag that onto the plan sheet in 1 to 50. The next will be the lamp layout plan. I place this on the plan sheet in the same way. Finally, I will also prepare the wiring layout plan sheet.
Once we have placed all the plans, we can print them out in PDF using documentation print print queue command. I click on the plus button to add the lighting plan print sheet. I select A3 landscape format and set the aspect ratio to 1 to 1. I arrange it in the center, then click the apply button to accept the settings for all the plan sheets. This gives us the print queue. I can change the order using the arrows if necessary. To merge the pages, I have to choose the combine into a single PDF file option. I select the location to save and then click print. The PDF is ready, which I can scroll through as you saw at the beginning of the presentation. This brings us to the end of the presentation. I really hope that you found it useful and I will see you at the next lecture. Until then, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.